some people do look at my life Mm -hmm. and they say, oh my God, you get to be on this platform and you get to, you know, do plays and do all of these other things, these purpose-driven things, but these things aren't a part of my plan. You're an author, you're, yeah, these weren't things that I ever thought about doing. These weren't things that I planned on doing. Um, Oh, you just stumbled upon them? So it's, it's like the verse Proverbs 19 and 21, the many other plans in a man's heart, but it's the Lord's mm-hmm. purpose never knew. Yeah. Many other plans. So these were not my plans. When I became an author, it was because God told me to write the book. It yeah. wasn't, I, didn't, I never thought about being an author. Actually three years before that, I was having a conversation with a friend and she was like, you know, I always thought about being an author. And I'm like, why? Like, I only just wanted to get married and have some children. Like, these other things that people thought about, you know, I want to yeah. you know, be on this platform and go here and do that. That's nice. I want to have my children and take them to soccer. Like, that is what I, <laughs> that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. And so, um, a long answer to your question of do I, what, what is singleness to me? Um, singleness and life in general is following and being obedient to the things that God has called us to do. Yeah. Um, and the way that that looks is different for everybody. Mm -hmm. And it looks different in different seasons, but definitely in every season of our life, whether we're single, married, a parent, God has a purpose for that season. And it's about getting on board to, okay, what do you have me to do right now? And that's what happens when we give our life to Christ. Um, I'm giving up all of my plans, all of the things that, and you say it in the song, all my dreams. You say it, you say it when you sing it. (laughs) Yeah. You say it when you sing it, but when it actually comes to fruition of that's what I have to do, I have to literally just follow the next thing that he's telling me to do. Whatever he says to next. That's what singleness has been for me, just doing the very next thing that he told me to do. Mm -hmm. And I love that you said you know, you were thinking in your 20s, you would have the kids in the soccer van and all of that, because now that I'm 29, I feel like I wasn't even ready. I I wasn't ready at 22, even though I thought at 15, I would be, you know, I wasn't ready before. So I, I, I definitely resonate with that. And if you, if you think about it, you know, a lot of people, I mean, we've all done it. You said that you did it too. You, you kind of coveted marriage. That was a big desire for you. And it was for me, but for anyone listening who may currently be in that season or in that space of coveting marriage, they see their friends getting married or their family, people in their life. Is there something that you would encourage a mentee or someone that's like looking to you, looking up to you. And they're like, you know what, Corel, you, you have accomplished all these things. What could I do? Or what should I, you know, how, how do we help someone navigate? Navigate that, that, that one, don't beat yourself up um, about having that struggle because mm-hmm. there are some people who would, who would look at people who have that struggle and be like, why is that such a struggle for you? But I think in the kingdom, we all have different areas of weakness. There are some people who've never struggled with marriage. It's not a big deal for them. They don't struggle with it all, but they've struggled with addiction or they've struggled with promiscuity. And just how I can't look down on someone else or they may struggle with homosexuality and say, oh my God, like how are you struggling with that? And not having grace for that person just because I don't know their struggle. I, I want the person to first feel like, okay, don't beat yourself up because that is a struggle because we all have weaknesses and that just happens to be that's so good um and so that was something that I had to to be okay with to know that one it's my know where I am but don't stay there so that it's don't know where you are give yourself grace for that that season ask people to pray with you ask people to walk with you but know that that's not somewhere you should stay so the reason Mm -hmm. why you shouldn't stay in the position of coveting marriage is because when I'm um going after God, a relationship with God saying, God, I want more of you. I want more of you. And I want a marriage. I had a friend who told me, I said, I said, the problem is you want, um, Jesus and you want to be married. She was like, what's wrong with that? I'm sorry. Uh, Carell, I, don't, I don't understand the sentence. What are you trying to say? So what? Yes. I want Jesus and I want to be married. Uh, tell me what's wrong with the sentence. The thing is you want both of them equally. And so therefore God is competing for an idol that's in your heart. And so we have to be able to take marriage off the table, although it may be painful and more painful for some than it is for others. We have to be able to say, like Moses said, I'm not going to go unless you're going with me. And therefore, I don't want it unless you want it for me. And if God wants it for me, he can bring it to me. There are so many things I talked about, like you said, the things that I've done in my bio that I didn't want, that I didn't search, that I didn't try to get. And he brought it right to me. 
Yeah. I wasn't going for it. I wasn't looking for it. A lot of things just dropped in my lap. So if that's the kind of God I serve, if he wanted you to be married, sis, you would be married right now. Yeah. So don't make it an idol. Don't make it an idol. When you yeah. go for both, if I'm going, oh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to strengthen my relationship with Jesus and a godly marriage. We put godly in front of it to try and make it sound better. No, it's still an idol. <laughs> I don't, don't, don't try to put the godly in front of it. It's still, you're still coveting it. So one, don't seek for both. Seek for Christ. Mm -hmm. Matthew, you know, it sounds cliche. Six and 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And it, it sounds very easy to roll off your tongue and all mm -hmm. righteousness will be added. But if he has it for you, he will bring it. So don't seek both. That's the first point. And the second point is, it's not going to fulfill you. You can't put your weight on it. You can't yeah. put your, you can't put your weight on marriage as great as that marriage may be. You cannot put your weight on it because you're about to marry another human being. And mm -hmm. when that human being disappoints you, you're going to say, what is this trick? What, yeah. what kind of, what kind of thing is this? I thought this was about to be mm -hmm. roses. I thought it was about, see, you, you have a very beautiful background. And so a lot of us in our mind, when we've coveted marriage, we think that that, that beautiful background is what we're about to enter into just yeah. every just single day. It's just going to be so beautiful. We're going to have this background. I'm going to let off day. on it. No, mm -hmm. he going to piss you off, sis. Yeah. At some point, the background going to come down. <laughs> I get what, what you're saying. Do you, do you think it sometimes the desire itself would just kind of cloud our ability to hear from God in, in that moment? Because if we're idolizing marriage, you know, I, I'm not... I don't think that every desire is horrible, but I, but if we idolize marriage, do you think it kind of hinders our ability to hear from God or, or pursue that purpose to write the book? If he's telling us to write the book, to write the screenplay, if he's telling us to do that, do you think marriage would get in the way or just the desire of it? I think if you have an unhealthy desire for it, it can get in the way. So notice I said unhealthy desire. I do yeah. think that there are a lot of desires in our heart that Christ placed in there. And yeah. I do think that Christ placed my, my desire in marriage for me. I was praying about it and, and reading over the, the questions that we talked about that we were going to talk about today. Yeah. And I was, I was praying about it and asking God, you know, why did you give me this strong desire? Like, like why? Because he, like I said, a different people struggle with different things. So yeah. this didn't have to be that strong strong of a desire for me. Mm -hmm. um, just a little bit of my a, a background and my story. Like I said, I thought I was going to get married at 21. Um, I was in several um, committed relationships in my 20s thinking that was going to be it. It didn't mm -hmm. happen. And around 27, I felt God told me to take a year off of dating. So when I took the year mm -hmm. off at 27, I said, you know, by 28, you know, Jesus, you're going to you know, work it out. You should, <laughs> On the I'm, birthday. Okay. I'm going to be <laughs> abstinent. I took the year off for you. You're going to do what you have to. Um, Shana, I'm 36. Shana, I'm 36. I'm, I'm 36. I'm, I'm 36. My man, my man was doing something different. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> this is his plan, not my plan. But I say all that to say, I, when driving around today, I asked God, like, you know, why did you put this desire in, in me? Yeah. So I do believe God has marriage for me. I do believe yeah. that my marriage is going to be one that um, helps to build up the kingdom, that is is purposeful, that there is a lot for us to do in the kingdom. And mm -hmm. I believe God had to take me through this journey in order for, to prepare me for the mm -hmm. kind of marriage that he's building for me. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't have made it through the preparation season if the desire wasn't strong. I would have said, oh, well, I might mm -hmm. as well just do what I want to do. I might as well just, you know, focus yeah. on me. I might as well just know, but because the desire is so strong, then I'm constantly clinging to him, knowing like, God, how do I make you first? Because if I didn't make him first, then I wouldn't have been able to do the things that he's allowed me to do in the last nine over these years. Yeah. As a single. And all of these things I truly believe are preparing me for the kind of marriage that he wants me to walk into yeah. and the kind of ministry and mission that he wants me to do in that marriage. And so the desire had to be strong. And he knew, oh, I love it. Delicia said he's building a strong root system for the journey. He is. The kind of things that he has me to do in marriage need a strong root system, as she indicated. And so therefore, if I didn't have the strong desire, I might've given up. I might've mm -hmm. said, well, I'm not going to do any of these things anymore. But I mm -hmm. believe that that's why he had the strong desire in me so that I could keep going. So I don't think the desire is bad, yeah. but I do think that we have to to watch because it can cloud. Like the, the original question you were asking, can that mm -hmm. desire cloud? I wanted to be so married so bad, Shana. Like I would take any sign as this person, my husband, people who've ever I heard agree. me on a platform before, 
they have heard me tell the story of how I was in New York and this person mm -hmm. that I thought was going to be my husband, I tell you no lie, their name was engraved in the cement for like six blocks to the place where I was staying. I said, well, if it, this isn't a sign, I, it was the devil. That, that was <laughs> the devil. I don't know why the person's name was engraved in the basement, but literally for seven blocks, I was like, oh, wow. Ah, name engraved in the pit. And yeah, then I would have took that as a sign too. You know what I'm saying? I, I used to be driving. I definitely on, see the confusion right there. Driving yeah. on highways and then names on the billboard. I said, don't, don't do it. Name on the billboard. Yeah, and I would often I would every time I would travel, I would see a family member of that channel. I was making up my own signs, but yeah. uh, but that but because I coveted marriage so much, yeah, everything like you said that, that didn't seem that far out. The name engraved in the thing, of, but everything to me was a sign. So I will tell you something that I did that I asked God for because I, I was getting confused with these signs and wonders. <laughs> so I asked God, I asked God, I said, when you are ready to present the person to me. And yes. for me to be presented to the person, there are three things that I am asking of you so that I can find peace. Mm -hmm. um, and three of those are our verses. So it is um, he that find it a wife, find a good thing. So he will be pursuing me. Yeah. So anytime I get in a predicament, I'm like, maybe, maybe this it, if the person's not pursuing me, then that's mm -hmm. one indication that mm -mm. either yeah. this is not the person or this is not the time. Either one, he's not actively pursuing you. So that was yeah. one. That's so good. One, Number two was seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness will be added. He will love God more than he'll ever love you. Mm. He'll love God more than he'll ever love you and ever love any, any, anything else. God would be clear first in his life, not in his bio on Instagram, not putting up a verse, every clear <laughs> indication that he loves God more than right. he loves anything else. Don't make me an idol. No, no. Yeah, I <laughs> so, can't help you. <laughs> right. So if I, so the, the, so that would that would be another indication. Someone's pursuing me, but I realize that you don't have a true relationship with God. And so mm -hmm. that's an indicator. And the third one that I asked, and, and I, I use all of these, cause again, my judgment could have been clouded because I wanted married so much. So the third one was how can two walk together unless they agree? I have to be able to see how the vision and mission for God that has for my life align. And that doesn't mean we have to be in the same career. It doesn't mean that he also has to be in ministry. I just have to be able to see the visions aligning with what God yeah. has called me to so do. So he should know his purpose. Right. He has a purpose coming and a to vision. you. Right. You have a purpose and a vision. I'm not saying you have to be stacked. Oh, he has to have the financially wealthy. He needs to have this kind of job. It's not mm -hmm. those superficial things. No. Do you have yeah. a vision? Do you have the vision for um, that you feel that God has placed in your life? And do mm -hmm. I feel like that's a, a vision that I can submit to? Yeah. So the mission, getting behind, submitting to the mission that you feel God has for your life. So if there's no mission for me to submit to, then it ain't you because yeah. you have no mission from God. So what's yeah. your mission? What's the vision God gave you? Can I submit to that? Can we walk in that? And so those mm -hmm. are, and that person has not been presented to me as yet. Again, mm -hmm. it could be somebody that I've met and they just not presented themselves in that way mm -hmm. yet, or I may have not met them yet, but until yeah. those things happen, then I, I had asked God to give me peace because I, I can't do it with the, the, the concrete, the name of the concrete and the, I can't, th those aren't the signs. I can't, it's all common. Going back to that name and the concrete sign and a wonder, right? <laughs> did you feel, <laughs> did you feel like at that point you were ready for marriage? Because when I look back on the times when I wanted marriage, I wasn't, I look back, I wasn't even ready. I didn't know what submission was back then, you know? So do you feel like you were ready or you truly needed this growth? You needed thought I would have been time. divorced. Divorce, Shana. Divorce. <laughs> These people, not even divorce. In the Bahamas, we change our W's to V's. Divorce. <laughs> I would have been divorced. I would have been divorced. I um <laughs> I don't think I was ready. Like, I don't. Like, I think I would want to think that I would have been ready, but I yeah. one of the things is uh I think I would have, you know, straightened up and get to do what I need to do. However, the marriage that God has designed for me, yeah. I don't think I would have been in that marriage if I had connected to any of those people that I was trying to connect to. Mm -hmm. I couldn't be who God, this person that you see here today, the person that is an author, the person that is in ministry, the person, that person could have not been connected to anyone I have dated. When I look at my past, not that those aren't good people, they have all moved on with their lives, they're married mm -hmm. with children and they've moved on and fulfilling their purpose with the people they were meant to be purposed with. But okay. I could have not been the version of Corel that you see here today and the version that God is creating me to be and the work he has called me to do on the earth. There is no one that I was connected to that I would have been able to be the wife that God needed me to be. 
I might have been able to. visions didn't align. No. And and again, because I didn't know the vision that God called for my life. Again, I was just trying to be soccer mom and drive the people to to, to school. (laughs) And so therefore I was in this version of myself. True, true. So God had to mold me. He had to say no all Mm -hmm. of these years because I have a greater plan. And you may kick, you may scream, you have nights of crying, you have nights of overwhelming, comparing, jealousy, all of it. There is, there is pain when you have to die to yourself. It is painful. Mm-hmm. But I had to literally die to myself to be able to be the person that I am today. Yeah. So there was more that God had in store for Corel than Corel could see. And <laughs> that's the word for somebody. <laughs> so where you are now, I'm sure you've gotten all the uncomfortable questions to Corel when you get married. When you bring in somebody home, I know you had these questions. I do. We had them too. What do you say? Like, how do you appropriately answer something like that? When you get in married, because people ask that all the time. They feel like, you know, okay, it's time. You graduated. Okay, you should be from the, from after you get that diploma, you should be walking down the aisle. That's, that's yeah. the next step for a lot of people. Yes. So what do you say? when addressing other people's expectation for you. So I've had a lot and I want to get some audience engagement in here. So type <laughs> in the chat, the most uncomfortable question you have ever got as a single. I want to read. Yes, them. please, please. <laughs> Type in the chat, the most uncomfortable question you've got. The most cringy. <laughs> okay. So one of the, I don't know if it's the most cringy, but it's the one that's coming to my mind when they mm-hmm. say, why you ain't married yet? You don't want to get married. I mean, and why? I get that too. So I know you don't want to get married. Of course, I want to get married. Of course, I you you what you waiting on? <laughs> what are you waiting on? I mean, you have some, I hate you you have last some money for me. What am I waiting? Do you have someone for me? Okay, you ain't trying. You you're not trying to get married. Eh? You know what? I forgot. <laughs> I forgot about that. I should just go to the food store and pick up a husband right now. Like, what, what right. was I thinking? Like, of course, they're right in the food store, just waiting. <laughs> picking up milk no, in the produce aisle <laughs> ben, you better hurry up girl you you getting up there you don't want children eh? didn't even think about that biological clock i forgot that I exists hate that. <laughs> that that exists very people get that a lot too though you know like when are you having a child or when you having another one it's just very intrusive i feel <laughs> they have them in the chat mary say people don't ask me directly but they go through my mom <laughs> Lord have mercy. That's worse. <laughs> you getting married this summer? Like who told you? <laughs> you getting married this summer? I don't know. What? <laughs> uh, most uncomfortable. I was single, not engaged. My doc asked, why am I not married yet? Right after a pop smear. Yes. Oh my yes. God. I had a roommate. She came home and she was having a breakdown at 32 because of a conversation with the doctor. Um, Because she was 32 and the doctor was like, what are you doing? And she, it just, it, it really broke her down when she came home. I was like, it's going to be okay. She was just yeah. like, it really triggered something in her. So I think sometimes people don't even realize how much of a trigger it can be because yeah. it really knocked her. She was 32. She is married now. I'm yeah. um, in it's trying. Um, but it was, it was a trigger because again, it's similar to what Zemi said. I'm in the doctor's office. I'm vulnerable. I'm doing something as, you know, open yeah. and vulnerable as a pops man. Then you ask me, if I'm not thinking about children, like, yeah, I am. And then you don't know people's struggles. You don't know what people are going through. You don't know why they make the decisions they make. That's yeah. just so, you know, you may be waiting on that sign and a wonder. I know. <laughs> it's Believe. just, but how do you, what do you say to that, Corel? Like when you, when someone say, you know, you ain't married yet. What, what do you say? Oh, it's so appropriate. <laughs> so <The> appropriate. <laughs> So sometimes I say, I just say, no, no, not yet. I grin and look. <laughs> That's what I do too. <laughs> not that girl. I want to have that like quick comeback, that snapback. It just don't be there. Like I yeah, want to yeah. have it, but it's not. I just say, no, not yet. Then I say, you know, keep, sometimes I'll say, keep praying for me. No, not yet. Like if okay. you, someone, you know what you want to introduce me, I don't know. Don't bring it up then. Don't, if you don't have no one to introduce me to, don't, don't bring it up. Just yeah. But I think, I think, um, I do think that there are some people who mean well. I, I think, think that, that I do think that they mean well. Felicia said be, she was called in her boss office for two hours to find out when I was getting married. No, oh my okay, gosh. That's, that's excessive. 
<laughs> oh, that's that. Woo, that's. <laughs> I, I've never had that. I've just had, like I said, I do think they mean well, and and they they want that for you, mm-hmm. and they just don't know. Sometimes people just don't know what is the appropriate language. Um, sometimes they ask you about a person. What about this person? No, you sure? Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure. Did you you heard something I didn't hear? I didn't. Mm-hmm. I didn't hear nothing yet, but if anything yeah. changes, I will tell you. And it's, <laughs> are you open? Are you open? I am open. I'm maybe yeah. you're missing the sign. Are I'm you right. looking? I, I was trying to get married at 21. I'm 36. Trust me, sis. I'm on it. My eyes, <laughs> I did not. Maybe you didn't think about this one. Trust me, I thought about it. I thought about it. Anybody who saw me look at, I thought about it. It just, it just, <laughs> right now. I'm not blind. I'm, I'm with you, sis. I'm on this game too. I'm trying. I'm, I'm open. But, but what I would say, you know, just, just I honest, and I honestly hope they do it. I'm saying, you know, just pray for me. Just, yeah. <laughs> they say, oh, their mom is sending them pictures of their coworker. <laughs> he's cute. Like, do you think he's trying to set her mom is a matchmaker? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So sometimes I ignore it. Yeah. Sometimes I say, do pray for me. Um, and, and sometimes I just say no, no, not. Correct. I think some of them are may- maybe worth ig- ignoring, though, especially when it comes to the touchy subject of kids. I just think, you know, you just never know. I feel like, why are you even asking? You don't I know. You know I do have, I do have a comeback with the kids because I'm 36. I do get a lot of, well, you need to hurry up if you want to have kids. So I oh, get that wow. a lot. Like it's like it's like they're trying to come for me with claws. Like I didn't know my age. Like. <laughs> 36. I did not. I You're did like, not. wow. <laughs> right, girl? I'm, I'm considered <laughs> theatric. I, I got that. No, I didn't. I know it. I knew it when my birthday came. But <laughs> I do have I do have a response for people when they say that. Yeah. I would tell them that I do know women who got married at 27 and they're 36 and still trying. So, no, 26. I know someone who got married at 26. Oh. So that seems like a perfect age of 26 yet they are now 36 and still trying. And yeah. I said, I also know someone who got married at 39 and had a baby at 41 and 43. And so therefore, if God wants me to have a child, it I will be happen. because I could get married in my twenties and still not have one. And I know someone who got married in their forties and had two back to back. So yeah. if, if that's what he wants for me, he'll be able to do it. And I have to trust that. I yeah, can't just not limited. Married, He's no not limited by our time. Like, just because like you, we all of a sudden woke up and realized that you was 36. I knew I was 36. I, I did not want to. And I say that maybe that's why God blessed me with so much energy. I am an energetic person. Some people call me extra giddy, energetic, whatever you call me, it's fine. Maybe it's because <laughs> I have to run after children in my forties. I don't know. Maybe Probably. That's, that's what I'm going to have to do. I, I believe you still going to have that van. You still going to have the soccer van. Let's go, baby. <laughs> you still will be carpooling with the kids. So you needed this energy. He get you. <laughs> talking at 40. I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so why do you think for, I don't know if it's just in Bahamian culture or maybe it's just called, I don't know. I think it's maybe a lot of people in general. Why do you think singles are looked at as lacking or like you need a man, like capital N-E-E-D. You can't do anything. You need one right now. Why do you think, because I feel like I even got more of those questions younger. Mm-hmm. I feel like at 18, 19, you know, leaving high school and stuff, people would ask that. So you looking for anybody? You know, I think that's just... Looking back on it now, why are you asking a little child? But, you know, but why do you think singles are looked at as lacking? I and- think it's, I think it's because culture, I think it's tradition, mm. um, just the way you grew up. I think that people feel like that is the next step. And, and that's why I felt like it was the next step. And so therefore oh. it's, you know, in this day and age, you know, you have, you, your parents may have gone to university, but your grandparents may have not. Your grandparents may have not even done high school. And so it's not so long ago when that family structure was the way that you survived. It was a matter of survival. Mm-hmm. It was a matter of that's how, you know, you do life and that's the next thing you do. And yeah. so therefore it's not that far removed. And so when I say that the most cringy I would get is my parents are great. Like I don't have parents who are like, Oh my God, I want grandchildren. What are you doing? Like my parents have been, some people do though. <laughs> yeah. Some people do. And yeah. I've been blessed. My parents, my parents never get on me for being an entrepreneur and they've never gotten on me of saying, Oh my gosh, are you having children? 
Yeah. Um, and I appreciate that. And I'm sure that they, they probably feel it and they probably get it from people asking, when are you going to have a grandchild? So mm -hmm. I think that they even go through it as, as I think uh, people in different seasons go through different things as well. And so I think that it's not so long ago when it was a part of survival. So I think that's one of the reasons that people ask traditionally. Um, and I do think that, like I said, some people are just concerned, especially if they know it's a desire. So I do know that some people who do ask me, they've heard my story, whether on a different platform or a platform before, and they know it's a desire. It's not just because, you know, there's sometimes, and, and I have to be sensitive a way that I, um, looked at it too, is I have to be sensitive to newly married, um, friends when I want to say when the baby's coming and realizing that may be an uh. insensitive question. Insensitive question. Mm. Um, and I had to get used to realizing that's that that may be an insensitive question, but when it, it was coming from a good place because I just really want it for them. So I think I had to get used to the fact that when someone asks of why don't you have a person yet is they may be coming from a good place. And even though I would like them to learn a, a better way to address it, I yeah. do sometimes have to give grace on the other end because some people really, they just really want it for you. I remember saying, oh, COVID-19, hey, my, my husband needs to come so I can have a small wedding, so I have to pay a lot. And I said that to somebody and she said, no, no, we've all been waiting on this journey. We're all coming to this wedding. <laughs> this, is, this is no small oh, <laughs> oh no, Corral, you've been talking about, you wrote books, you, you, you spoke on platforms. What are you talking about? We're coming, we're all coming. This is not a COVID-19 wedding. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, I think that sometimes when people ask, they are coming from a, a place of, I really want that for you. And they, sure. and they are going to genuinely, I know. I mean, I have some people on this call. I know they're going to be like, oh yes, he came in great. Where were you? Okay. Here. <laughs> yes. Yes. So I think when they do ask, it's really just coming from a good place. Yeah. And I didn't even think about it until you said it just now. It's not far removed. Our grandparents, I, now that I think about it, my grandmother met my grandfather at 18 you know, my, my mom and dad got married at 23. So that was the way of life. My mom then. got married at 21. And that was oh. why my, that's why I never fathomed this life that I live right now because yeah. my mom got married at 21 and yeah. that's what you do. And she actually got married late considering her peers. So like you said, it's oh. not that far removed because my mom getting married at 21 was considered late because most of her peers got married at 17, 18. Oh, Wow. And so this is, I couldn't thing. imagine, <laughs> it's a I wasn't thing. ready. <laughs> um, so we, and the thing about it, when I say we have to offer grace to other people when they're asking, cause some may be coming from a good place or they just don't know better or old people just don't know what to say because <laughs> even some of the careers, like as an mm -hmm. entrepreneur, because it's cool to be seen as an entrepreneur, we're still going against the grain. So there's yeah. still some people who would ask, what you do again? I don't, what, you have a job? You have a job, you work for yourself. Yeah, I don't understand. They're still trying to, so there's a lot of things about um, technology, about being an entrepreneur. There's a lot of things in this day and age that older people do not understand. But if we, one of the things that I did want to say tonight, um, mm -hmm. like I said, give yourself grace if you're in a season of it's hurt, it's hurtful when someone tries to have that conversation with you, but also realize that there's still some healing. Because if it hurts so much when someone says, you know, why aren't you married? then ask God, like, why does this hurt so much? Why is this so hard for me to deal with? Is this an area that I need to heal from some? Because I don't get upset when somebody say, what do you do? I'm like, I'm an entrepreneur, get with it. Yeah, like, this is what we do. You own your own business. I'm not, I'm not offended by that question. Yeah, even yeah. though they don't understand it, even though they're a little confused, I'm not offended. But a part of the reason I don't think I'm offended is because entrepreneurship is celebrated in our community. But you know what is still not celebrated? Being single in your 30s. Yeah. And so therefore, am I trying to please the culture and the community and fit in with the culture and the community? Or am I good and content? Because if I'm trusting God and asking God what he wants me to do next, then I'm good because he has me in the season for a reason. Yeah. And so I think one of the things that we have to get on is our, I need, if, if, if it's hurtful, give myself grace that it's hurtful, but know that I need to heal and I need to ask God, how do I heal in that area? Darlisi is on the call and I went to an event that she had the other day and she was saying, knowing the character of God can really help you through difficult seasons, seasons mm. that are difficult for you. Because so true. When, when the enemy tries to say a lie to me that you're not good enough because you're not married, you're not worthy because you're not married, you're, mm -hmm. you're missing out, you're not going to be able to have children, the age is getting, when those lies come to me, I put my weight on, I serve a good God. 
I put my weight on that God has his best for me. I put my weight on that God is not a God who can lie. I put my weight on the fact that God has purpose for me. So when I put my weight on God, then I tell the enemy, it, it may not be that season for me, but I'm here to please God and God has a great plan for me. So it's good. He's good. He can yeah. only do good. So what it is, is if it's a hard conversation for me to have with others or a hard conversation for me to have my with myself, then I have to go back to God, help me to heal really well in this area so I can put my weight on you because I know you're not going to give me anything that's not a good gift. And in yeah. this moment, singleness is a good gift. I may not understand fully why, but I have to show me why this is a good gift because anything that comes from you, is good yeah that's so good Carol. preach <laughs> you preach for us today that is so good um just in closing this out what do you think is something that our married friends like how could they support and be their sister's keeper for their single friends what's the way that they can support them because like you said that's such a great perspective that you said he doesn't all things he does he does it good it's it and there's purpose in every season and you have that understanding but the people around us sometimes don't always have that and, and i didn't i did that's why i said give grace to yourself because i remember being right? in the like, girl shut up you don't know you don't know what I <laughs> So the first thing, <laughs> first thing I want to say something to singles, they let the, the married women, they're our allies. And I know sometimes I'm like, you don't know my struggle. You don't, you get to have sex with your husband. I've been celibate. I've been abstinent for nine years. You don't know my story. Leave me alone. You don't know. <laughs> you don't sleep next to warm body. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to. Sometimes we get, so, so single sis, let, let's give them a little break. Let's get there are allies okay let's not attack them because we don't have warm bodies the lord will send the warm body you just mm -hmm. use that cover and comfort they're right still now. our sisters they're still our sisters let's use yeah. that comfort <laughs> let's use that comfort and y'all pray for us but one so i want to say that give them some grace give them some grace and number two one of the things that i love about my married friends that i think has helped me during the singles journey is yeah. i have some very transparent married friends and they're not people who have been ever on a mic, but when we have one-on-ones, they tell me the realities of marriage. They, they ask me the hard questions. I had a married friend who said, why do you want to be married so, so bad? And the first time she asked me that question, I was like, oh, like you coming for me. Like, <laughs> I, I want to be married because. Yeah, what you trying to I say? Want, I want a companion, <laughs> a best friend to have times with. She was like, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> And children, I want to, I'm not going to have children until I get married. So yeah, those are my reasons. I why, want my van. Why? Yeah. Why? Why? <laughs> why do you ask me that? Why are you coming for me? I was like in my twenties. <laughs> and so she said, what if you marry someone who has to work a lot? Um, and they're always on mm -hmm. the job and you can't have children. Would you still want to be married? And she came from my life because she said that could be your reality, but that mm -hmm. is still marriage. And so that was, that was, that was one time when someone asked me a question and I, I, I had to dig deep of, yeah, what do I want it for? Because if there are selfish reasons you're going into marriage for, and you don't get those things fulfilled, are you going to want to leave? Because mm -hmm. it, 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 you're the, the, the reality doesn't meet the fantasy. And so she mm -hmm. has to, she had to remind me that don't get caught up on a fantasy because the reality of marriage is X, Y, and Z. The reality of marriage is these potential things can happen. And they love their marriage. They don't down marriage. They, they talk very well about their spouses and the relationships that they have, but they're also very real with me of these are some realities. Also walking into things that never were planned. Like we never planned to live with in-laws, but the father died as soon as we got married and then we had to. And now it's nine years later and it's like five people living in one house. That was in the plan. We didn't plan for the man to die, mm -hmm. but he did. It happened. Yeah. And that's the reality we had to live with. So you could plan all of these things. You could say that all of this was going to happen. So Mara said, surely not for the selfish. Yeah. So you could, so mm -hmm. when, so I would tell married friends, uh, like, like they did for me, um, just be real, be real with the reality yeah. of this is the reality of marriage and, and be prepared for that. So that's one. Um, another thing is, um, where, where, if your motive is pure, I don't think it's, it's, I don't think it's bad to have a conversation with a single sister about singleness. If the motives, so I find that it's not necessarily someone asking me about singleness, but mm -hmm. where their motive comes from. So I had lunch with a friend I did not see in years the other day, and she just recently got married. And she told me, she said, 
She said, I don't believe um, that you're not married because, oh, you're doing something wrong or that you should you should feel like, oh, something's wrong with you because you're not married. She's like, I don't think so. She said, I'm someone who never went out, Corel, never went out. And if I ended up getting married and you always all about the place, it's not it's not a lack of because some people would say, maybe you need to go out. Do you think you're just going to meet the UPS man? Maybe you need to. And she was like, I don't that's, that's not something you're always out. She said, but I do believe that even though you're in the public eye that God has you hidden because the kind of person that is connected to you and it goes back to what I was saying again about the mission that I feel God has for my marriage she said it just can't be just anybody she mm -hmm. said it can't it has to be somebody who is being led by God she said when we sat down here you were telling me about a conversation you had with the Holy Spirit on the beach everybody can't have that conversation with you yeah. around yeah. It was like, everybody can't have that kind of conversation. So it's not just any old body that you're about to be connected to. Yeah, and he so, has to be able to cover you. Right, he has to be able to cover you, to lead you. And so know that if that person hasn't been presented to you, that this is God's hand at work. And like I said earlier, I could trust God. So, and that gave me so much peace. I've had conversations with people a lot of times about singleness, but when she said that, that gave me a lot of peace. So when you have a pure motive, feel free to have that conversation with your sisters, yeah. my yeah. friend. Feel free to have that real conversation about what they're going through. And I trust my married friends to share about singleness. I know some people feel like, but I do because you were one single in order to be married at some point you were single. So I do trust their opinion, their feedback on it, you know, and I love how you mentioned um, your married friends are honest at, about you know, some of the things that they're going through and how some things aren't planned and you just kind of keep it moving, you know, because you're, pre they're preparing you for a covenant. Like this is reality. We can't just easily just walk away. Oh, I don't feel like doing that. Bye. You're, it. you're prepared for a covenant. Yeah. And the final mm -hmm. thing I would say, and it may sound cliche, but I, I really do want to say it yeah. is pray for them. Because sometimes you may feel like I don't have a word or sometimes somebody may jump in your spirit and you'd be like, man, I really wish that she would meet somebody. Say that little prayer. Go yeah. on, Father, I know you have someone for her. Please, uh, you know, I pray that you give her patience. I pray that you give her peace, discernment. Um, and for that, that person that you're preparing for her, that they would be, you know, they will connect in the divine timing that you have for them and that you will just continue to carry her and continue to reassure her during that time. And just even sometimes giving a word of encouragement of just, I just, cause sometimes it doesn't have to be like you found someone else yet. It could just be my mind went on you and know that I'm praying for you. I'm praying for God to connect you with that person. He has for you that word of encouragement, because you will have hard days. Yeah. You will have especially if it's something that you always wanted, you will have those moments of it's hard. Um, God, I don't know why I'm still in this season. You know, you'll have those moments. And so as married women, if you could just, you know, sometimes say, I'm praying for you. I got yeah. you back. I know that's a struggle for you. I know it's a weak area for you. Yeah. Or you, even if you don't say that, if you just say, you know, I'm praying for you because um, trust that God is, is walking you through this season. So, you know, you have your emotions, you have your ups and downs. Yeah. Um, but it's just remembering that, you know, God has a great plan. Yeah, that's so good, Corel. Thank you for sharing that. I have one last question for you. Good. Okay. So what is Corel's current season like now? Are you just fully purpose? I know that you, you have already shared. Yes, I do believe that I will be, I have the desire for marriage. I will be married one day. I will be the soccer mom. <laughs> but what is your season now? Are you just fully purpose driven? Do you do anything to kind of prepare for marriage or are you just, or you do both or are you just fully whatever my purpose is right now? That's, that's what I'm honing in on. Yeah. So I think, um, I feel like it was last year that I kept getting very heavy that marriage is soon happening for you. And so for me, I was like, okay, cause tomorrow Jesus is going to be, and it was, he was like, no, not tomorrow. Um, but I think it was cause he needed me to prepare. And so some things, and so when I say prepare, it's not the Pinterest board of pinning the wedding. I used to do that. I had to take it down cause it was an idol. So I deleted that, but when I used to do that too, Yeah, I had to delete it. <laughs> so prepare looks like what it, what it began to look like was starting to take things off of my plate. Um, I do a lot. I, mm -hmm. I have been very driven and walking in purpose and God said, I need you to make room. So that's one, um, moving things off of my plate, um, restructuring mm -hmm. the way that I do business and moving things off of my plate, um, spending more time with family. 
cherishing <laughs> me too. The Holy Spirit was like, delete. Yeah, I had to delete that. <laughs> uh, uh, spending more time with my family. Um, mm-hmm. I did this exercise where, you know, not making your whole life about a romantic relationship. And so what you do is you write me in the middle and you put different um, uh, lines to sh- represent the different relationships in your life to talk mm-hmm. about how you could be pouring into your relationships as a daughter, your relationships as a sister, your relationships as a niece. And so cultivating those relationships more. So me and my dad started to do our lunch, our weekly lunches again, me and my mom and my sister, we do weekly meetings on Sundays. I started doing once a month, learning how to cook with my aunt. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm definitely in that season of preparation of one, connecting with loved ones, two, learning how to cook, three, moving things off of my plate. And um, God gave me a revelation. I had a friend visit, a platonic friend the other day visit, and I wanted to make sure that they really enjoyed their time while they were on the island. And when I put them back on the plane, I passed out for the whole weekend. Like I was sick. And so I felt like God was trying to remind me, like, you need to take some of these things off your schedule because yeah. people tell me all the time, if somebody came right now, Corel, you're not ready. I will get ready. But what I realized <laughs> with my friend being here that week is mm-hmm. every night I had something, I had something on my agenda every night. And it wasn't something that I could have just moved. And so it reminded me like, you need to remove it. Anything that God is saying to remove, move off of the schedule now because you think in my mind, I thought when they come, I'll be ready. But for example, my friend was here for a week and there was nothing on that schedule that could be moved. Everything I had to do that night. And so I tried to fit in both and try to make everything happen. And that was that. I feel like God was trying to remind me, I need you to move things off of your schedule. Yeah, make room. Make room. I need you to make room. So that's what preparation looks like for me right now. One, you know, getting, praying more, getting in the word, not trying to run ahead of God and just really mm-hmm. trying to focus on that relationship, because I think prayer is going to be something that's really needed um, in a marriage, especially when you try to control things. God's like, you're going to be able to control it. You're going to need to know how to pray. You need to know Mm -hmm. how to come to the Holy Spirit, because sometimes we like to control things and the Holy Spirit is like, it's my job to convict. So I need you to learn how to get in prayer. And so praying more. And then the last thing that I do a lot in this preparation season, I've been reading a lot of books. I've been reading a lot of books and listening to podcasts that deal with relationships, that deal with marriage, um, just in preparation of my mind as well. Yeah. I need to do better at reading more books. I need to do better at that. Maybe you could suggest a couple. So I'm about to do The Power of the Praying Wife. I've read that. Mm-hmm. Um, that was really good. I did Relationship Schools by Michael Todd. I have The Sacred Marriage. I think The Sacred Marriage is one that I have right now too. Um, and there's, oh, the meaning of marriage I read a year ago, which is really good. Tim Keller, the meaning, meaning of marriage. marriage. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll definitely get some of those. I enjoyed this conversation, Corel. Thank you so much. If anyone has any questions, please put it in here. If you have any questions for Corel, we could pick her brain for one more minute and then we're going to let you have your Friday night, Corel. We're not going to hold you up. Single post a job. <laughs> Huh? <laughs> I think I'm supposed to child. <laughs> Purpose supposed to child. Ah, I love that. Purpose supposed <laughs> to child. I love it. But if there aren't any other questions or comments, we can go ahead and end this. Thank you so much for everyone joining. You will um hear of the other conversation that's coming up. I think it's in June. We'll be talking about godly dating. Girl, you gotta hop in. He might be there. He might be there by then. We'll be talking about golly dating. But um, I just want to thank everyone for joining. Thank you, Corel. And we will let everyone enjoy their Friday night. Thank you so much. Oh, and her season has um and their own Instagram. It's called at her season. Her no, her season is now. So go ahead, if you're on Instagram, go ahead and follow. That's where we will post all the dates. Wife or Ministry page will also have the dates as well for all the upcoming events. Thank you so much for joining, guys. Bye.